Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the day you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Until you are precious and powerful. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. And by your spirit, you are worthy, you are worthy. worthy. <laughs> Jesus. Lord, you Lord, are Lord, worthy, Lord, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy, worthy. Almighty God, you are worthy, worthy. You are worthy, worthy. You are worthy, worthy. Shada, you are what you are. What you what you what you what you are. 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 What you what you what you Shada, you are what you are, 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 what you what you you are, what you what Shada. Blessed Redeemer, we appreciate you for you are worthy. You are wonderful. There is none like unto you. King of glory, we bless you for you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You change it not. Glory to your holy name for your goodness and mercy all the time. Thank you for the past week. Thank you for the beginning of another week. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your divine protection. Thank you for your promises. Unto you alone be all glory and honor. We pray, Lord, you open our hearts, you open our eyes, you open our heart of understanding. Father, you let your promise come upon us today for this end time. Holy Spirit, we receive you. Glory to your holy name. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Thank you for your reliable Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name. Thank a dependable Father. Thank you, Unto you be your glory. Thank you, Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Blessed be thy name, O Lord. Thank you, Continually we shall continue to praise you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. King of glory will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are welcome to another day. Another beautiful and wonderful day. We thank God for our God remain the same. There's no other God except Jesus. And for the understanding about him, we are grateful to God. Many people do not know Jesus. Many people have been deceived. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Satan has deceived the whole world. There must be a time in your life whereby you realize you have been deceived and you are ready to turn back to your maker. The word of God says, the knowledge of the Lord shall fill the whole heart. When the word of God is referring to the knowledge of God, it's talking about the glory of God. 
The knowledge of God is the glory of God, is the power of God. So when you are in Christ, you don't need to be looking for anything else. Beside Jesus, there is no other God. Is the beginning, is the Alpha, is the Eshida, it's all in all. It's a wonderful, fulfilling Father. So we thank God and we shall continually thanking Him. It's good to be praising God all the time in any situation. As a matter of fact, His situation is not the one that will make the enemy to override us or to prevail over us because it's not a thief. The enemy is the thief. Jesus is a life giver and this Jesus is real. If you have not given your life to him, you are missing a lot. You are living a life of risk and it's better you surrender your life to Jesus. With him, all things are possible. He's been in this wicked world before. He knew what you are facing. He knew what I am facing. And in him, there is life. There is hope. Outside Christ, there is no life. There is no hope anywhere. So once again, I want to, to invite others to join us this morning on our channel very soon after the service it will be on youtube and after this first section we are going to have the second part of our discussion on heart to heart uh, facebook and, and channel um, youtube rather youtube and facebook we shall be expecting you three o'clock, 3 p.m. Nigerian time, UK time, German time, and even Ghana time. God bless you. Please share the share button. And if you have not subscribed to our, our YouTube page, please do likewise. It is well with you. We are also on Rock City in Nigeria. Ogun State, Abel Kota, every Wednesday, 7 30 to 8 o'clock. God bless you as you'll be joining us if you are in and around that place. We have this topic today to treat, and it's going to be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13 to 15 verses. I title the message, Beware of Masquerades in the Church. Masquerades, pretenders, fake people, fake ministers, fake prophets, fake members, fake. Why it has been like that? Too many fake people, untrusted people. Camouflage. You see, people in in abroad, when they wear army camouflage, it doesn't threaten anybody. But in Nigeria, if you wear it, it will threaten the police and the military. They camouflage. They torture you. They beat you. They they can even ask you to remove it. They will naked you on the streets. Why are they being threatened? Because of the insecurity in the country. So why do we have too many masquerades in the church? Fake people, fake believers. You see a fake church yesterday, knowing that Pentecostal is the latest, and you, 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 you hear the first prophet speaking in talk, Murakaya, Baba, Basha, Kalaba, Chakalaba, Chakalaba. You wonder, is that how you can just shift from one, you know, demon possessed kingdom to another 
deceitful kingdom. You wonder. I was on uh, PFN, Hoku State's uh, chapter on the Facebook. I, I saw a man who for a long time in the Eighties, myself and one brother, Femi Shola, we were trying to reach out to him and preach the gospel to him. But I don't know why it never happened. But all of a sudden, well, because the Bible says, except the corn of wheat falls down and die. And that period of bearing the uh, the, the kind of width, it will take some time. It will, it will be rotted. Then fresh fruit will start, you know, it will start with leaf and gradually it will become a tree, a sustainable tree that can carry the fruits. But these days, because I used to be a a leader in my former demonic church and I now want to change over I still want to retain that leadership my brother my sister the devil will catch up with you you will turn to a deceiver you will turn to instrument in the hand of the devil there must be a time of forgotten a time of neglect a time that you will disappear whether into the wilderness, whether anywhere. But today, you want to retain that leadership. It's dangerous. I've counseled people like that before. They never listen. And today, many of them are no more. Many of them are no more. There must be a time of soberness. There must be a time of turning back from your old way. And there must be a time of training, a time of empowerment, a time that the Holy Spirit will fortify you before you launch out into a new ministry. That is if you are even called by God. Because the God of your stomach that has called you, this person, if you are opportune to be listening to me, you have missed it. I am telling you the truth. It's, Christianity is not like that. You can only give what you have to people. You used to bath for women. You used to, you know, naked women. You used to do all sort of rituals. And now you are talking like Pentecostal people. You are one of the masquerades in the Christendom. So we are speaking on this topic today. Masquerades in the church. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Even the name, you know, Agoeli or whatever, whatever. And now, are you saying Agoeli is not a Pentecostal church? Do you even know the meaning of Agoeli? Oh, I pity you people who close your eyes to the truth. I pity those who are following him. And I suspect he must have sent out his children, you know, to go and study what is being done, maybe when they were in the higher institution, and they now come back without the seed of righteousness in them, without genuine repentance in them, and he himself is still the general overseer of such a place. Oh, for how long are we going to continue in this? And the result is what we see in Nigeria. We are in a nation without a living God. Masquerades in the church, masquerades, even at the helm of affairs of our nation, ungodly people, wicked people, evil people. We are reading Second Corinthians 11, 11, chapter 11, and from verse 13. For such people, or let me, can I take it from verse 12? Let's see what is in verse 12. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Let's go to 
of the Bible because the word of God is sharper than two edged sword. Without the Bible, <laughs> whatever any Jew is telling you needs to be cross checked, need to be checked back again. 11 or from verse 12. Let's see what is there. So to give us the full meaning. Mm. Mm, wonderful. So verse 12, verse 12. To accept, okay. Mm -hmm. I've seen some gurus here. Glory to Jesus. I've seen further. Mm. Or should we even start from from one? What I've seen here. Okay. Let's start from 12. But I will continue to do what I am doing in order to cut off the opportunity of those who want an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in what they are boasting about. For such people are false apostles deceitful workers disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself is disguised as an angel of light. So it is no great thing if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their destiny will be according to their works. In this matter of boasting, I don't speak as the Lord would, but foolishly, verse 18, since, okay, we have even exceeded our 15. So let's stop for there for now. God bless you. First apostles, first members, first prophets, even Satan, their master, disguises himself. The reason why we must be very careful, we must be at alert. We must not be careless. The Bible says, believe not all spirit, they test. Have you tested that spirit controlling you? That spirit that is directing you. Have you tested? Because everything has become fake. If Satan can disguise himself, you know, when masquerade put on their regalia, they change their voice. They want you to believe that they, they are not from this planet again. That's why they call them around. You see, somebody that has been dead and uh, he, he's not alive. This is what is happening in our churches today. These guys, people, people who are not real, pastors who are not real, they mimic their mentor, they mimic their master. And who is their master? Satan is their master. There's something in Psalm 125. Masquerade, beware of masquerades in the church. And this thing has escalated. It has gone to the point of no return. You can deliver yourself. You can come out of it. You can be guided by the Bible. You can be wiser than the enemies. Psalm 125, 
and verses 1 and 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. It cannot be shaken. It remains forever. Masquerades in the church. If your foundation is not rooted from the Bible, they can influence you. They can sweat you here and there. They can, they, they can fill your head with malices that will end you up in hellfire. What you will, you will, you will make up your mind that no, even while you know what you are doing is evil. You are not getting results. And whatever temporary results you are getting, ask yourself questions. The Bible says, ask yourself, are you still in faith? Anything done outside faith is nothing but the seat of the devil. Satan himself masquerade himself. Satan disguised as an angel of light. Just to deceive the simple hearted people. Don't be among the simple hearted people. Be guided by the word of God. The, the true word of God. The word of God himself is Jesus. And God had prepared for this end time. In John chapter 228. In the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Flesh profited nothing. But when the spirit of God comes in contact with flesh, flesh becomes something supernatural. And that is what you need in such a time like this. Believe not all spirit. Test that spirit. Cross-check that spirit. That message that person is telling you. When somebody is telling you too much about the Old Testament, making you to keep the law, you know the flesh cannot keep the law. The law and the flesh, they are not together. Because it is impossible for the flesh to fulfill the law. But when the Spirit comes upon you, the Bible says you become like a wind. It's not you blowing. It's the Spirit of God inside of you that is pushing you around. Is the one leading you, guiding you. And the Bible said, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. It's possible for you to be a child, a true child of God. And whenever error is coming, that spirit, the, the, the correct spirit on the inside of you <laughs> will click and remind you, check it, wash it. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. A true believer in Christ cannot be moved, cannot be troubled, cannot be shaken by the wind of the enemy, by the contrary wind, because we are like Mount Zion that cannot be shipped here, run there. Hallelujah. Those who trust in the Lord, they are like Mount Zion. It cannot be shaken because whatever can be shaken will be shaken and be destroyed at the end. I was in Nigeria some years ago and I learned about a rock that has been there 100 years ago. Just collapsed and came down and went straight to the property of a family, killed all of them. I think there were about five of them. Killed all of them. That rock has been there 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago. You see, what is it that cannot be shaken? Our faith in Christ. Our faith rooted in the word of God. Is your faith rooted in the word of God? Or is rooted in the name of your church? Or is rooted in, the, in, in, in your geo? You, you trust your geo more than the word of God. The word of God is sharper than two edges sword. Verse 2. Jerusalem, the mountains surround her, and the Lord surround his people, both now and forever. The hand of God, the hand of protection, is upon those who trust in the Lord forever, till eternity, from generation to generation. 
unmovable generation. Let your confidence be in God. Let your trust be in Him. It's better to be alone than to be in the congregation of the masquerades. It's better to be in the company of they that know their God. Not many people know the God they are serving. Because if we all know the living God, our nation will not be like this. Let's see Job 14 and verse 16. Masculines, pretenders. And I'm going to tell us more about the meaning of masculines. So that when you are looking for something, you know what you are looking for. Hallelujah. J-O-B. J-O-B. 14. And verse 16. 16. What are you looking for? Why are you jumping around? Verse 16 says, For them, you will count my steps but will not take note of my sin my rebellion will be sealed up in a bag and you will cover over my iniquity 18 but as a mountain collapses and crumbles and a rock is dislodged from its place as water wears away stones and torrents wash away the soil from the land so you destroy a man's hope when your hope is not built upon the word of god it it will melt away it will be destroyed when there's in the time of shaking it will be forgotten it will be the things of the past but when your faith is built upon the word of God, you will be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed, that cannot be shifted here and there. Hallelujah. You completely overpower him and he passes on. You change his appearance and send him away. If his sons receive honor, he does not know it. If they become insignificant, he's unaware of it. And so on and so forth. The last one. Is 22. He feels only the pain of his own body and mourns only for himself. You have this life to live. It is appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. Beware of masquerades in the church because on the day of your visitation, you alone will go to wherever you desire to go. You will find yourself wherever you desire because now is the best time you can choose the right paths, the right association, the people you mingle yourself with. Masquerades everywhere from the Asoro to the local government or the governors or the senators they masquerade themselves to masquerade means you cover up somebody was recently advised to remove what he was using to disguise and he dresses better today masquerades beware of masquerades in our churches unfaithful people ungrounded people unloving people people who are falsehood people who are not faithful people who are not trusted pastors who never knew jesus and they are preaching about jesus they are talking about whom they've never had any encounter with masquerade beware of them in our churches 
First Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 and 6 tells us that though they are that are called gods many, they are not gods many. People call them gods. People worship them as gods. People see them as gods. You know, somebody will tell you his experience that Jesus came into his sitting room and they drank tea together. One will tell you Jesus who sent him came as a blind man, you know, and he was asking for uh, arms. All kinds of, it's written in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 8, 5 and 6. But verse 6 says, but to us there is better. I want God is here to be known by the people in this world. And Jesus is the one. Is the, is the Alpha, the Omega, is the beginning and the ending. Jesus said, before Abraham, I am. Yet people still believe that they, they, they need to seek for another God. Jesus, in the midst of his disciples, the disciples demanded that this God you are referring to, through his humility, he was so humbled. And his humility wasn't fake one. Like so many Jews pretend to be humble today. But they are humble because people can be deceived after them. The Bible says, by their fruits we shall know them. Check around them. The fruit they are bearing, they bear it unto the God of unrighteousness. The God of mammon has taken over churches. And because somebody is succeeding in it, others are joining. Be careful of the masquerades in our churches. Pastors, are becoming masquerades because Satan himself is acting like a masquerade. Satan transforms himself as an angel of light. But why must you be deceived? Why must I be deceived? When I took the decision to give my life to Jesus, when I noticed that I was on the wrong path, I turned back. I took that decision, personal decision. The decision of salvation is a personal one. It's not because oh, we, were, we were born into that religion. We must all die in that religion. My father died in that religion. My mother died in that religion. So I must also die in that religion. You will, so that you will not have yourself to be blamed on the last day. So that you don't bite your finger. Be careful. The masquerades are in all over the places. Everywhere. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us. Our God is a faithful God. The Bible says, faithful is our God who has called us and he will make you to stand to the end. He will establish you upon a solid rock. Glory to Jesus. We have something in John chapter 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Beware of masquerades, false teachers. They come to you as saints, as God sent, God has not sent them. Overnight, they become preachers. They know what they are looking for, but don't go after them. Don't go with them. Don't join them. Don't be deceived by them. For faithful is our God who has called you. Looking unto him is the author and the finisher of your faith. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You want to claim you know the Father? And you are claiming you are telling the whole world we are serving the same God without knowing Jesus? Some people, they know Jesus partially. They claim to know Jesus partially. You can't know Jesus partially. It's either you don't know him at all. Or you know him. And when you read John chapter 1 from verse 1, this is Jesus that has been in the beginning with the Father. This is Jesus. When you say somebody is in the Father, you say, you can't separate somebody who is inside of me. And the Father now brought him out. And the Father said, listen to him. Whatever he tells you, you should do. Because the Father is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
whatever you are doing that there is no truth in it, wash out. You are your way to destruction. And that is not the best way for you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is the, 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 the teaching of Jesus. He said, you cannot come to the Father except through me. I am the one that will show you the way to the Father. And by the one you are inside Jesus, you will know better that everything comprises in him. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That life you are living without Jesus is a temporary life. It's a life of shame and disgrace. Somebody I listened to a brief interview of him. He said he was being brought to Nigeria, you know, in a, a carton of fridge, and uh, to come for an assignment to slaughter some people. You know, he, he, he started mentioning people they have slaughtered, including MK Wabiola and the rest of them. Can you imagine? In a country, you know, where people claim to be serving God, masquerades are in all over the places. In the physical, when you see masquerades, you know, going to the market, begging for money, you know, dancing here and there, you see it in the physical. You don't know that it's more than what you are saying. There are some masquerades you cannot see. I remember in 1982 when God opened my eyes to see a, a, a demon with two horns at the so-called mercy land in Abel Kuta. And in anger, I came out and I saw myself walking from that place, uh, Jaye. I walked through to Oban Toko and God was telling me some things. I, I, I came through uh, Itoko from Adato, you know, came to uh, uh, Ijaye. I returned back to Ijaye, I, where I, I, I had my house there. So I left my house to Abantoko, came back, and I was seeing people walking on their heads. God opened my eyes. Many people you see, they are in the, in the, in the natural, they are not natural people. Many people you think they are normal people, they are not normal people. Don't you see what is in Revelation chapter 2 verse 13? He said, I know where you live, where Satan has his tent. You live in the territory of the devil. What do you expect? You, if you cannot see the supernatural things, then I'm telling you, you are a dead person. You know, that will let you fear God the more and will bring you closer to God. But the devil and his people following him, the, the devil is using it to draw people to himself so that you will go and fortify yourself. There is no fortification you can give yourself except the word of God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I give God the glory that in all these things I went through, I still remain, you know, standing upon the word of God. They that put their trust in God, they will be like, Mount Zion that cannot be shifted here and there. Too many masquerades, agents of darkness. They want to lure you out of faith. They want to make you digress, you know, from the, from the right path to the wrong path. Watch out for them. They were in every place. They were in all over the places. They were among the past. There were too many of them among the pastors. And that is why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, every other thing shall be added unto you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The first John 5, 19 says, we know we are the Lord. Until you are sure, you, have, you must be very sure, my brother and my sister. This is my plea for you. You, if you are not sure, you are not sure that is why you are still running here and there. There is nothing impossible for God. The Bible says, after you have received the promise of God, the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is to let you know that the presence of God is on the inside of you. What, what else are you looking for when you carry the presence of God? Uh -uh. Okay, you are misquoting the word of God as if God be for us who can be against us. Do you understand what uh, that verse is saying? 
That is, if God is on the inside of you, anytime I'm at work and I saw a crowd of people, you know, coming towards the store where I, I, I am working, you know, I, I, I just laugh. Because I know, I, I even yesterday I asked myself, what is making these people to be uh, frightened? What is making them to be afraid? There are some things they couldn't see. You, you, you know, you can't see that they see. I've given that example of Elisha and Gehazi. You know, Gehazi, in his old life, in his uh, uh, life of evil, he was living. You see, he couldn't see what Elisha was saying. So that is the difference between somebody godly and ungodly. The ungodly, they, they, they have no bright future. Anything can happen to them. But for the righteous people, people who are heaven-minded, people who are righteousness-minded, I'm telling you, the hands of God is upon them and there's nothing the enemy can do about them. I want us to read Habakkuk 3.18. Habakkuk 3.18. Read it. Open your Bible. This is not the God that will tell you, open your Bible and don't read. That is demonic. That is deceitful. When you read the Bible, when you open the Bible, you must read. But today, we have taken away Bibles from people. We have given them candles. The Bible is supposed to guide us. It's supposed to it's supposed to lead us right. Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus is the Bible. He's the word of God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The Bible says all things were made by him and for him. You see, he's been in the, in the beginning with the Father. He knew it all. In fact, the Father has handed everything to him. The Father loved the Son and he has handed everything to him. You can't see any God without Jesus. There's no God outside Jesus. And that is in, in, in Zechariah chapter 13. I don't know which part you belong to. Are you in the part of two thirds that will perish? Or you are in the part of one third that will be refined, that will pass through fire, that will pass through tough time? Tough time is a is approaching in, in the whole world. We have, we have started saying this since 2019. People are still crying. They are not out of it today. You see, people are dying here and there. Apart from kidnappers, apart from rob, robbers, apart from accidents, apart from fire incidents, all these calamities, they are to tell us that the presence of God is not in the world. When the presence of God comes upon the world, all those things will cease. But this is what the Bible said. that we are allowed to talk, to die, to be destroyed, to be killed. But the righteous, I'm telling you, you have hope. We have hope. Our hope is in Christ. We are not going to perish with the world. We are not going to die like chicken. Fire is not going to consume us. Kidnappers will never get to us. Glory to Jesus. Even if they have got it to you, you will escape. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise to God. He said, yet, in the midst of all this trouble, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Any religion without salvation is fake. Any doctrine without salvation is fake. Like that preacher that I talk about, you see, you just change your, you didn't even change the name. The name still remain. You see, he removed the garment. We are in Mufti. And he's now talking like Christians. Christianity is not in talking. The kingdom of God is not in words. It's not in barabababashakarabashakarabashakarabab. Those are fake. Those are the language of the masquerades. The heavenly language is the standard of the word of God. Hallelujah. And we told us last week, God has made us able ministers of the spirit, not of the letter. 
The letter is the way we do it. But we are ministers of the Spirit. The letter kills. The way people are doing it kills, destroy main people. You know, destroy lives of the people. But the Spirit brings life. Receive that life. That life is in Christ Jesus. Except a man is born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see the kingdom of God and you are preaching about the kingdom of God you, you have never seen. Even your environment, you don't know what is going on there. When Revelation 2.13 tells you, I know your works. I know the work you are doing. You are doing it just to fill your belly. Huh? And I know where you live. You live where Satan lives. But the devil want you to drop the word of God. Want you to forget the word of God. Want you not to see the word of God as important. Zebel, you hold on to it. In the time of trouble. Is it not in your Bible? When the Bible says, uh, Proverbs 11, 21, it says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. <laughs> Whose seed are you? And the seed of the righteous doesn't come from your parents, doesn't come from your family. It comes from when a man is born again. You are born into the family of God. You are born again by the Spirit. We are made able ministers of the Spirit, not of the letter. The letter kills. The letter is telling you how difficult it is. But the Spirit is telling you with God all things are possible. The Spirit is telling you when you surrender your life to Jesus, the Spirit of God will come upon you. And that is in John chapter 3 verse 8. A man that is born again is like wind. You blow to where you are listed. You are listed into the seed of righteousness. You find it difficult to join evil. You find it difficult to, to listen to the masquerade. You find it difficult to give up on God. That is when the Spirit of God comes upon you. What do we see around today? People gather their members together in the church. They've calculated how much is your tithe. They even monitor your tithe. They know whether you are giving it or you are not giving it. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is not the gospel of the Spirit. That is the gospel of the letter. And it kills. It brings judgment and condemnation. They that must worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Whatever you are doing that the Spirit of God is not confirming, it's of the devil. Whatever you are doing, and it's not by the leading of the Spirit, it's evil. It's masquerade. Masquerade everywhere. Deceitful people everywhere. No true judgments. The seed of the righteous. In the midst of problems, they shall be delivered. What more can I say about masquerades in the church? Masquerades are the rebellious people. Jealousy. When you jealous someone, that is masquerade. Not only that, let's see. First Samuel 15, so that you will not think uh, I'm speaking of the word of God. First Samuel. First Samuel. Fifteen and verse seventy-three. No, verse. 
achevé. If I'm correct, show me verse. Is it 23? Let's check out. I just want to be sure. Yes, 23. 23, yes. Glory to Jesus. It says, For rebellion is like the sin of divination. There is no masquerade that will not go into the spirit of divination. <laughs> you know, you can see the masquerade will be claiming to be praying for people. And somebody who is a beggar in the garment of masquerade praying for you that want to give him money. That is what people do. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and deviance is like wickedness and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. That is somewhere unto Saul. Once the opportunity is given to you, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you a rest. You say, no, I don't want to come to you. And now you join yourself into the Kaaba of where somebody close to you will lure you into divination. We tell you, we just come here to cover up. When trouble comes, there's one Baba somewhere that normally help us. And somebody will be telling you, heaven will help those who help themselves. As long as they will bat in your jail, you see, oh, you can tell your commander, it doesn't, you better withdraw yourself, my brother, my sister. I beg of you, withdraw before it is too late. Because Satan, the Bible says your adversary, is moving about looking for whom to devour. The devil cannot devour you until when you know you are not fit for the kingdom of God. Until the, I will rejoice in my salvation. When you are saved, sound saved. You rejoice in your salvation because you know the wicked one cannot touch you. And you know, even if the wicked one kills you in your ignorance, you are not going to benefit him in his kingdom. That is in the, in the hellfire. The kingdom of God summary violence and the violent take it by force. Deliver yourself right now. Check yourself. You have been in that situation for a long time. You have been in that association for a long time. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. See what God has done for you. Since you have been claiming you are a believer, you are a Christian, what, what, how many people can you talk to about the word of God? How many people can you transfer what you have gotten you know, to help them, establish them in faith? You are just... You know, because you are still passing up, because you are still getting your daily bread, because you are still ashwebi to ashrimbo. What about eternity? That doesn't create avenue for all this rubbish. Where you will enjoy the rest of your life in eternity, where you will be happy for life. Rebellion, jealousy, manipulation. When you manipulate people, when you can joke people, when you want to add to the word of God to, to, to make people fall for you, for your wrong teaching and doctrine, you are a masquerade. Beware of masquerade. Masquerade among the preachers. It doesn't matter whether that person is holding a PhD in theology, in any field, in life, wash out. Satan himself, the head of all of them, transformed himself as an angel of light. And the reason why he's doing this, to capture many people to hellfire. Beware of masquerades in the church. Hallelujah. Let's see, finally, 
And I mean finally. Psalm 119. It's a popular passage. 119. Thy word precept by precept has made me wiser. The word of God makes you wiser than the devil. The devil fears the word of God. He doesn't fear your outlook. He doesn't fear your might. He doesn't fear your stature. He doesn't even fear that your the words that you are you are saying that is not rooted in the Bible. But in the word of God, he fears the word of God. The word of God is sharper than two edged sword. From verse 97. Psalm 119 from 97. How I love your teaching. It is my meditation all day long. Your command makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. Let me put it right to you. Don't think the meditation of the word of God that is with you all day long means you should sit down, you know, throughout the day when you are supposed to be at office. And be reading the Bible. No, oh, the one you have digested. You know, the word of God says, I found thy word and I've eaten thy word. The one you have read before, the one you have digested, you know, it, it will be coming to mind all the time. When any 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 situation arises, you see the word of God that will come. You know, the word of God will come out of your heart. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. The word of God will remind you how to behave. The word of God will remind you how to act. The word of God will remind you what to say. You know, at the at, at every point in time. This is what the word of God is capable of doing for you. Your command makes me wiser than my enemies. For it is always with me. It is always with me. The word of God will not from you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is what it means. It is the amount of the word of God you have taken into your stuff that will be useful for you at the end of the day. You say, I have more insight than all my teachers because your decrees are my meditation. Some masquerades, they have published their book so that when you are reading their book, you will not have time for the word of God. You see, be careful. They are masquerades. They realize they have more members. They know how much they will realize selling 100,000 worth of books. They, are not, they have not written those books so that it will help you. The word of God is sharper than those books they have written. If you don't have the stuff of the word of God, I am telling you, those their books will disappoint you in the time of trouble. This, it has been working for me. And I'm sharing this with you. Any situation I find myself, when I see myself surrounded by enemies, I remember the word of God. That they that be with me, they are more than they that be with the enemies. So I have more insight than all my teachers because your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the elders because I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path to follow your word. Keep your feet. Churches today, there are people, masquerades in the churches, whereby when you go close to them, they will tell you, we only come here for to cover up. When situation arises, I will take you somewhere. It's happening. Agents of darkness are in the churches. Recruiters, from the church to the kingdom of destruction. You are on your own, my brother, my sister. You are on your own. Let nobody deceive you to end your life in sorrow. I have not turned from your judgments, for you yourself have instructed me how sweet your word is to my tastes, sweeter than honey. To my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every false way. You should hate every false way. 
when I saw in the spirit realm, I took decision. When I saw a demon, not only listen, I even I, I wanted to be sure. I went to a, 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 a colleague of mine I, I, to confirm, and she confirmed to me that yes, this is what they have been keeping away from me for a long time. I should hold my peace. I should keep it a secret. And I know, I know the consequence, and I was ready to face the consequence. This is the reason why people are not getting born again properly today. You know, they don't want to face the consequences of what they have been involved in. But I'm telling you, if God be for you, no one can be against you. I fought it as if I never fought any battle. I went through it as if I've never been through any fire. That same God is your God. Don't be afraid. Many of you, you know, that religion you find yourself, you know there's no salvation there. How can somebody travel all the way from abroad to Nigeria only to be asked to carry candles? They want to pray for him. And at the end of the day, they pour perfume on him and it got burnt. And that was the end of his life. That is foolishness. And brother, let me tell you, you are straight on your way to hell fire. Through your ignorance, the veil that Jesus has removed, the scale that has been taken away from your eyes, as, as handsome as you are, as you think you are blessed, to be blessed in this world is not difficult. Even if you, if, if, if an occultic person, you will get more richer than those who sleep in the church. Because the devil is the one ruling this world. is the prince of this world. He blesses his own people. Nyafu nyafu as a life. But if you want to say, you are neither here nor there. You want to, you want to eat here and eat there. It will, it will just give you, you know, partial blessing. Your blessing cannot be as those who are really his. But let me tell you, that is the lie of the devil. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. To be rich means you have more than enough. You have all you need. You know, you have it in abundance. Because that is Jesus. Oh, I pray you will get this message today. You know, beware of masquerades. Masquerades want to tell you if you don't belong, you will not get what they are sharing in their coven. But I'm telling you, the blessing of the Lord will make you rich. You will be satisfied. The blessing of the Lord will make you not to go the path of the unrighteous. It will not make you to join evil and join the wicked people. Look at our young ones today. Every day you hear about Yahoo Yahoo. Every day you hear about somebody kill the mother. Just because they are so desperate. Look at our youth today. No matter what you tell them, there is a stubborn spirit. I sense that in the spirit realm. There's, there's a demonic, wicked spirit that is holding them firm. Tell them this is the way. No, they want to go the other way. I pray that Lord of heaven will break that demonic spirit over all our children. They don't want to listen to you. Tell them, oh, because the Bible said there's a way seems right unto man. The end thereof is destruction. But they don't want to go to that way because they believe it's quicker. They believe you didn't know anything. I've come to challenge you today. And I'm still telling you the word of God remains the blessing of the Lord makes rich it added no sorrow the seed of the righteous shall escape all these evils the seed of the righteous shall be delivered i pray for your deliverance today mm -hmm. i pray for your total healing i pray that the god of heaven will come to your situation and bless you more than you think and there won't be any added sorrow to the blessing in Jesus' name. God bless you. Beware of masquerade. The Bible says, let me finish reading that verse to 104. It says, I have not turned from your judgments, 
for you yourself have instructed me how sweet your word is to my taste sweeter than honey in my mouth i gain understanding from your precepts therefore i hate every false way every false way every false way if it is not by the spirit the flesh profited nothing anything the flesh is telling you the flesh was nailed on the cross of calvary but the spirit resurrected and that is why when mary magdalene and the other mary came to the sepulchre at the end of the third day and that angel who rolled away the big stone that the sin over the the, the 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 grave of Jesus sat on it after he had rolled it off, sat on it, said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? The flesh profited nothing. The flesh leads to death. And Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 and 2 tells us, Now then there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. They that do not walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And the, when people saw Jesus after resurrection, they wanted to touch him. He said, no, don't touch me. Because the, the, the body I now carry is not the body of the flesh, but of the Spirit. You dare not touch me. Hallelujah. And he said, it's better for him to go so that the comforter will come. The comforter will dish out from all I've been telling you and make it more explainable to you. You see, it will make it more clearer to you. All these parables you think I've been telling you because I was in the flesh. Now, the spirit is departing and it is this because God is the Spirit. And that God is the one that returned back to take up the position of the Father. That is the Holy Spirit. It's in everywhere. Even right now. If you open your heart, he said, I am at the door knocking. Revelation 3:20. If anybody hears my voice, how can you hear the voice of God? Through the word of God. Every prophet speaking contrary to the word of God is representing Satan, the masquerade, who disguises himself as an angel of light. If you read Hebrews chapter 1 from verses 1 and 2, it was in sundry time in the time past. God was counting on the prophet to talk to our fathers. These last days, Jesus is the true prophet, <laughs> and every prophecy is being written in black and white in the Word of God, interpreted in the Spirit. Without the Spirit of God, you can't understand the written Word of God. It's too difficult. And that is why you will, you, you will leave the Bible and carry candles. And that is why you will leave the Word of God and be licking uh, what do you call it? Oh, you, uh, honey. Or you'll be licking honey. When the Bible says the word, word of God, God is sweet. sweet. Is <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I am challenging you. That spirit of laziness must leave you right now. Amen. Laziness to dig the word of God. To, to, to find time for the word of God. To be happy with the word of God. And Google has made it so easy today. Even if you don't carry your Bible, there's no Bible translation that is not in your phone. When you Google it out, you can read anywhere you are. You know, digest it. Be happy with the Word of God. Most especially this afternoon, we are going to deliberate on the, the topic we've been treating, how to act, that is the Old Testament and the New Testament. It will shock you. That the Bible says the law is not written for the righteous. It's written for the lawless people, rebellious people, masquerade people, 
or genuine people, you know, haters of the truth. The law is written for them, not for the righteous. Meet us this afternoon. We are going to talk more on that. God bless you. There is hope for the righteous. But the wicked, their end has come. Hallelujah. You are welcome. You are welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah.